So last night I uploaded a producer POV video and this was taking a look, my initial look at the Yuhi Satin Tape Machine plugin. I'd heard a lot of really good chatter on the web about this. So there was an incredibly positive vibe in terms of how this thing sounded. And last night I just ran a simple 909 beat through it and I was experimenting, just checking out some of the parameters. I haven't actually had any time since so this is kind of like part two i'm going to dive in i'm going to talk about some of the things that i'm doing and just get a, a sense of this and um, i've got a remix on the go here this is the ultra nights and it's a track called ecstasy so for some people this will be the first time they've heard it and uh, this will be coming out soon and uh, i believe it's going to be a vinyl only release so it's got a real nice underground flavor to it what i wanted to do is to really give it some of that proper old school vibe by running it pretending I'm running it down to tape. I'll tell you a little story. Back in the 90s, um, myself and Darren Benjamin, who's known as Daz IQ, you know, uh, famous for being in Bugs in the Attic and the man behind so many other really great tracks. And um, what we used to do when we used to work in the studio together is in those days, you know, everyone was recording down to DAT tape. It was a digital tape medium. And it had this, it was a little bit too clinical, a little bit too clean. So what we used to do was to record stuff down onto DAT and then we would play the DAT back and record it onto reel-to-reel -reel tape. And we deliberately take the recording level into the red. So it would be, you know, like kind of the red meters, you know, when people say, oh yeah, don't record into the red, but there was a crunchy character that we used to love. So this is that vibe. It was adding a, a kind of extra level of compression. That's what happens. Um, and so <clears throat> really what we're doing is we tape a tape simulation, trying to get that kind of vibe. People are going to use this plugin in different ways. Okay, so the way that I'm using it isn't necessarily going to be the way that other people will use it. You've got to understand that, right? You know, I'm deliberately looking for a certain sound myself. You know, I'm looking for something that sounds a little bit kind of rough and ready, a bit vintage, a bit warm, um, fat, um, all these kind of textures and tones. And, um, you know, when you're making tunes, what you'll find is when you're programming your elements is quite often they're going to sound really clean, a little bit too defined. The, the whole kind of, it almost sounds as if it has been programmed at home. And, you know, people talk about this concept of gelling a mix together. And what it does is gelling kind of fills in the gaps. And uh, it's almost like putting some kind of smearing tool on a, on a Photoshop image where it's really stepped. And then you're giving that kind of smoothness. So it's kind of like the audio equivalent. And what happens is often that certain textures that were quiet in the past are brought out or other elements, you know. So this is what we're talking about, about gelling a mix together. It means that it's not as cleanly defined as it was when it started off. And that can really add that kind of vibe and character. Certainly that kind of 90s sort of vibe. Now, um, I didn't used to operate the tape back in the day, you know. And we used to literally have tape operators. So these were guys that were experienced in literally recording stuff down to tape. So I can't confess to understand every single parameter, okay? And, um, you know, I'm just going to be doing this by ear and getting a sense for it, all right? So it's um, if you want to read up on tapes, you know, these parameters, things like the speed, the IPS, um, pre-emphasis, all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, you're going to find plenty of material if you go to Wikipedia, look up Real to Real Tape and various other resources, go on gear sluts, etc. You'll find a whole bunch of it in, uh, you know, really useful information. So um, I'm going to play around and uh, see how it sounds. So let's just uh, have a listen to the track. I'll tell you what, I'll move it forward. In fact, it's probably a good idea to have it um, near the beginning because that's where just the beats are. So let me play it for you. Just going to turn it down a little bit on my side. Just realized um, that sounds a little bit heavy there. Just bear with me a second. Still finalizing some of these uh, elements. I'm just gonna drop in an EQ3 and roll off the bass on that. It doesn't need those lows. This needs to be quite thin. That's better. So look, you get a sense of the vibe here. 
and um, yeah, what it is is that that's got a nice kind of rough and ready beat on there and um, just to let you know I've got the L2 here this is just to cap the the maximum level that things can go to I don't want my video recording distorting here and of course if you're aiming to master your own tracks you need to do this sort of thing so it's minus 0.2 as a maximum level here and you'll notice it's actually hitting it quite hard at the moment I'm going to take that up because I really want to get a real accurate sense of what's going on with the satin when we turn it on take it up a bit more tell you the truth I was actually going to be using the um, the Ableton bus compressor all right so that's uh, what I was going to be using before the glue and uh, I've taken it out I wanted to see how this satin thing sounds I may go back to glue who knows um, I may stick with satin we're gonna just see what happens um, but anyway look that's just there at the end and so I don't want to be pushing too hard into that limiter because you're gonna hear that coming through and also um, by the way because this is mastering um, this is going to go to vinyl. I've got utility at the end here, so I'm going to reduce again if I'm going to run it down. So it's going to be like a 24-bit master with uh, none of this processing on. Um, so no L2. I've just got this little handy thing. So I'm getting distracted here. Ignore this, right? Look, let me just tell you something. If you're going to master, well, if you're going to mix a track down and somebody else is going to master it and put it down to vinyl, don't put some heavy limiting on there. Give your track some headroom, you know, so over here, maybe about minus six or something. So the mastering engineer has got enough to play with. But look, that's just a little sidetracking thing going on there. My limiter's back on. That's the last device in my chain. Satin on. Okay, let's have a look. All right, so let's, and you remember how it sounded. Um, so it's off. I'm going to switch it in. So here we go. It's on. As you can see, I'm not doing anything here other than switching it on, but there is some magic just by switching it on. There's something special going on there. You listen to, um, for me, it was a kick drum. It just has this extra dimension to it. You know, I'm not doing anything other than just literally running it through this circuit. So this is pretending it's running into that tape machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up, all right? Let me just bring that L2 to the foreground so we can just make sure we're not pushing too hard into this. And uh, we'll know that if this attenuation meter shows lots of gain reduction, all right? So I'm going to move it over to the side. I'm going to crank up the input now. This is like running it hotter into the tape. Can you feel that extra kind of vibe coming in there? Let me just have a play around here. So I'm going to go for the vintage tape. That's that's overcooked, right? I wanted to show you the exaggerated version. So that's too hot. Oh, by the way, this seems to have some kind of makeup gain thing going on here. So um, whilst that's on, that's going to compensate the output level for me. So I'm going to leave that on. Um, otherwise, I'm going to need to keep making adjustments. But um, this is good because we can AB really accurately. Could you hear that thump? That kick's just kind of got a whole new world to it. Possibly it's too much, um, but I really like this at the moment. Let me just take it down. Now, the speed here, um, this is the speed of the uh, the tape itself. Now, from what I remember, the faster speeds are brighter, the slower speeds are duller. Let me just double check on that, let's have a listen. Yeah, you definitely got a sense of the highs being reduced. So what's happening is if you want to get that real low fi vibe, you can take the speed down. And um, this all depends on personal taste, you know, what you're into. Um, 
there's a lot of character there that I liked. I wonder if the pre-emphasis is something to compensate. So say for example, if the speed is slow, we need to boost the highest to compensate. Let me take off the pre-emphasis. Yeah, look at that, there we go. Oh, do you know what? That's like another world. You know, I was working on getting this mix sounding nice beforehand and I was thinking it was sounding good. But now listen to that. Gosh, that's just like it is literally that's adding a vibe. So um, down here, we've got some additional settings. Um, this is probably where I'm going to get a bit lost. Um, wow and Flutter, I think, is some kind of um, kind of that deterioration, maybe in the way that things are playing back maybe the the tape heads and stuff you know there's there's probably gonna be some people watching this video now who could pass on some expert knowledge in the comments so that'd be great if you guys do um, understand every single aspect about this um, I'm assuming this is gonna make it sound a little bit worse a bit more worn I can the extreme value I can definitely detect something that feels a little bit different and actually I want to bring up the hiss a bit oh man when I switch that bypass off wow seriously maybe I'm going too hard with this maybe I'm pushing too much I bet you once all the music starts coming in I'm going to start reaching for some of these and turning them down a bit because um, I really love the character that's coming through here. Um, you guys listening at home, be interesting to see what you think. I'm just checking the levels here. Okay, now this is good. I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to keep this here. Let's go and check out some sections where there's some music. So I'm going to flip it over here. And uh, let's take that section. We've got a bass, an organ and stuff like that. Let's have a listen. I'm going to bring the uh, satin back in and see what's going on. So we're going to bypass. Um, turn bypass off so we can hear it. Listen to that noise. Okay, we're going to do before and after. So bypass on. So no satin in the mix. Okay, now this is with satin. Personally, on the headphones that I've got here, I'm not hearing that much of a difference. It may be, maybe it's a bit too subtle for me to um, detect. It'd be better for me to be listening properly on uh, proper monitors or my better headphones. These are literally DJ headphones. That's all I could find at the moment. Um, so this section here, um, certainly Wow and Flutter seems to be adding a little bit of interest on there. I really like the hiss, actually. It's got a real lot of character to it. Maybe there's too much. Um, let me forward to another section um, where there's some music. Let's go over here. Just nudge that forward. Let's have a listen. I'm gonna bring it back to the foreground. So I was thinking actually when I was listening there, I cranked it a little bit too much on the input. So I think I'm getting a better balance here. Let's take this a bit more over here. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll open this up. Let's have a listen.
Wow, look, I'm going to stop there. Um, that's sounding great. Um, so that really makes a difference there. And I really do need to try this out on proper speakers, of course, before I send it off to the guys um, for the, the the final mix down. But um, you can really hear how the satin can add that real kind of uh, real vintage tape kind of vibe on there. So I'm really, um, really pleased with this. Um, I'm going to try on some other tunes as well. So um, certainly on some other videos coming up, we'll, um, we'll take a listen to that. But, um, you know, top marks to the Yuhi guys. So as I said, I heard, I heard some really good things about this. And I've tried quite a few different tape emulations. You may have seen that I've been using the Nomad Magnetic. And um, I was really enjoying the sound of that. And also the Yamaha Open Deck as well. Um, but this one, I'm certainly getting a feel that uh, this is going to be part of my... Uh, kind of regular repertoire if I'm doing those kind of vintage flavors. So yeah, you can really hear that it adds this kind of extra dimension um, to the elements in there. It's got this kind of finalizing thing going on there. And uh, certainly for you, if you're into that vintage vibe, it's gonna be good, but equally in smaller doses, maybe it's gonna be good for other styles as well. Mm -hmm. 